so this lesson is um, about the introduction um, to vectors and and how we use vectors in physics. And you know we're we're going to begin studying motion in in two dimensions and in a few lessons. Um, but in order to do that, we really need to understand vectors. We need to know where they come from. And we've already talked a little bit about vectors and how they're different than scalar values. Um, and the reason that they're different from scalar values is that scalars have um, a magnitude and a unit, where vectors, of course, have a magnitude, a unit, and a direction. Okay, And if we look at how vectors are represented um, graphically, so using a picture, they're kind of like a directed line segment. So it's not just a line, but it's a line with a little arrowhead on it. And so this would be one way, this green line here, is one way of representing um, a vector graphically. So it's an arrow that basically points in a certain direction. And we use the points of the compass, north, south, east, or west, or we use up, down, left, right, to indicate kind of where those vectors sit in relative to some frame of reference, relative to some frame of reference. <clears throat> so this vector then is pointing in a direction that's given by east, and then it's 30 degrees to the north. So um, this is the way that we would write the direction of this vector. It's east, 30 degrees north. We could also write this in the exact same way by saying north, 60 degrees to the east. Exactly the same vector, exactly the same direction. When we use vectors in problems, we need to be able to manipulate them, similar to the way that we manipulate scalars. Okay? And in grade 11 physics, we're only going to concern ourselves with vector addition and subtraction. Okay? Later on, and perhaps in grade 12, and maybe in a little bit, we might allude to it a little bit later in this course, we'll deal with the multiplication of vectors. But really, how to add vectors and how to subtract vectors is what we're going to do in a big way in this course. The first thing that we need to know is that we always add vectors tip to tail. Okay, and so let's figure out what that means. Here's a vector a, and here's a vector b. And if I want to come up with the vector a plus b, what I do is I take the second vector, and I place its tail at the tip of the first vector. So it would look something like this. Here's vector a and vector b, and those two are arranged tip to tail. The addition of these vectors gives us, okay, well, it's from where we started at the beginning of A to where we end at the end of B. And that's represented here, A plus B, as this red arrow, this red vector. Okay, so this is how graphically we add vectors, always tip to tail. And this will help you because very often diagramming out vector problems is useful. In, in addition to this little thing, the little method that we've talked about, we can also manipulate vectors algebraically. And that's the topic of next lesson. But here, in the next kind of couple examples, we're going to look at vector problems and we're going to look at finding their answers graphically. So what you'll need in the next couple of problems is a protractor and a ruler. So make sure you have those with you as we continue on. So assuming that you have your protractor and your ruler, we're going to look at a couple vector problems. Okay? Do not answer these questions algebraically because you know, solving vector problems graphically is an important skill and it's something that you're required to know. So here's the first example. Complete the vector problems using your protractor and ruler. Answer each of the problems by stating the resultant vector. Okay, so here's the first problem. We're going to draw it out. So we've got vector 1, and we're going to say it's a displacement vector and it's four centimeters north. Vector two is two centimeters east. So what you'll notice right away is that I've arranged these two vectors 
so that vector 2, its tail, is at the tip of vector 1. 2 centimeters east, this vector d2, I could have put it anywhere on this grid, anywhere, and it would have been the same vector. But because we want to add them, we're going to put them in a way, we're going to arrange them in a way that's going to lend ourselves to, to easily solving this graphically. So the question is, okay, what's the total vector? And we know where it's going to run, because the total vector is saying, okay, I've got one displacement that's from the bottom of vector 1, and it's going to run to the end or to the tip of vector 2. Okay, so um, what it looks like is it looks like this. And what you can imagine is, okay, let's say that this is, you know, some distances that, you know, a bug travels on, on the top of your desk. If the bug travels 4 centimeters to the north and then 2 centimeters east, really, what's it traveled? Well, if it traveled it in one motion, it would travel this red arrow. And so what we can do now is, if we're solving this graphically, get out your protractor and measure the length and the angle that this vector represents. And what you'll see if you measure this is you have about 4.5 centimeters. And the angle that we get is about 26 degrees. Now, if you've printed the notes out from the, uh, from the website, these graphs um, represent approximately one centimeter squares. Um, and that's how I've set it up. You, depending on your printer, you may have squares that are a little bit different than one centimeter. So um, just make sure that that doesn't confuse you in solving these problems. Especially if you've printed so that, you know, you get four notes or four pages on one eight and a half by 11. Of course, your answers are going to be somewhat different. Here's another, um, so, so this is the way that we'd represent the answer. We'd say, okay, the total displacement of this vector, or the total vector, is 4.5 centimeters. And of course, this would be represented by north, 26 degrees to the east. Okay, let's try another one. Um, another couple here, for example, one. Here's one vector. It's 4 centimeters east and 3 centimeters south. And so if we draw a connecting vector from where we started to where we ended, of course the vector looks like this. And you should kind of be seeing a pattern. Okay, yeah, the resultant vector is always going to be, okay, where we started and where we ended. And it's always going to be the same thing. And of course what we can do is, is that we can say, okay, let's get out the ruler, let's get out the protractor, and we can measure... And we can see, okay, well, we can measure one angle, it's 35 degrees, or we can measure the other angle, it's 55 degrees. We can say, okay, so finding the length is not hard. We can measure this length to be 5 centimeters. Okay. Which angle do we use and how do we report this? Well, we know it's going to be 5 centimeters. And we can report it in two ways. This is either 5 centimeters, and then we have east 35 degrees to the south, or we can say 5 centimeters, south 55 degrees to the east. Okay, And that's kind of the way that we're going to report these. Both of those answers are equally correct. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have three vectors. We got 3 centimeters north, 2 centimeters east, 2 centimeters south. So we're adding three vectors. And we can add three vectors, no problem. We always want them to be tip to tail. So here's the three vectors, 3 centimeters north. And then at the tip of that, we've got the tail of the next, 2 centimeters east. And at the tip of that, we've got the tail of the next, and that's 2 centimeters south. So the resultant vector, where did we start to where we ended? the resultant vector is this. And of course, graphically, we can solve for the angle, and we can solve for the length. And this one we can say 2.4 centimeters north 63 degrees to the east.
We could also say, no problem, if we wanted to say east some degrees north, it would be east 17 degrees to the north. Or maybe, no, excuse me, 27 degrees to the north. So here's our final example in this lesson. A student walks 7.5 meters, excuse me, meters north and then 6 meters west. Draw a vector diagram and indicate the student's final displacement. So what we need to know is that, okay, this is a scale diagram. One centimeter squared is equal to one meter squared. And so on this diagram, if these are centimeter squares, then what we'd have is 7.5 meters north and we'd have 6 meters to the west. The displacement vector, the final displacement, is where we started to where we ended. And if we measure, we find 9.6 meters. And if we use the protractor, we find 38 degrees. And so how do we report this? Well, it's of course 9.6 meters. We started north and we're tipping 38 degrees to the west. So our final displacement is 9.6 meters, north 38 degrees west.